In 1905, Albert Einstein came to the conclusion that all observers will measure the same speed for light and that all uniform motion is relative, the foundation for his theory of relativity. In this video, I'm going to focus on how the constancy of the speed of light and relative motion requires distorted space and time. I will also focus on relativistic beaming and how it can explain some of the characteristics of these wonderful jets emanating from around supermassive black holes in the centres of galaxies. I want you to imagine that you're in a spacecraft, drifting through space. And out through a window is a yellow spacecraft, stationary relative to you. On top of this spacecraft is a light bulb, which will flash eight photons with their paths drawn in. Each of these photons moves at the speed of light, which is approximately 300,000 kilometers a second. In physics, the symbol for the speed of light is c. So the velocity of these photons is c, which I've greatly reduced here. Because the speed of all these photons is c, they all lie on an ever-expanding circle. In the distance, there's a blue spacecraft traveling along at point 2C. All the occupants on that spaceship feel stationary, just like we feel stationary. And when they measure the speed of the yellow spacecraft, they measure it as travelling at point 2c relative to them. So we don't agree on the speed of the yellow spacecraft. We say it's stationary, whereas the people on board the blue spacecraft say that it's moving at point 2c. However, when it comes to the photons leaving the light bulb, we both agree that the photons are travelling at c. All observers measure the speed of light as c. Let's observe the yellow spacecraft now moving relative to us, at different speeds. We'll have a look at how the photons are moving relative to us, and then we'll have a look at more detail to see how the space and time are distorted around the yellow spacecraft to keep the velocity of light a constant. With the spacecraft moving at point 2C, the light flashes and all the photons move out at C. Once again, they all lie on a circle. However, now, the distribution of the photons around the circle is not even. There is a slight concentration in the direction of motion of the spacecraft. Let us see what happens at a higher speed. The photon concentration is even greater in the direction of motion. At point 99C, the beaming effect is very obvious. The reason for this is the distortion of space and time we experience for the yellow spacecraft. Let us look in more detail at this distortion of space and time. Let us return to a stationary yellow spacecraft. We need some way to measure space and time. Firstly, I will introduce a grid attached to the yellow spacecraft to allow us to measure space. I will also introduce some clocks to measure time. There should be a clock at every intersection in the grid, but for our purpose I only need a few clocks. All the clocks are synchronised. 
There is also a stationary clock in the lower left attached to our spacecraft. The photons are emitted when the hand on the central clock is up. As the photons move through the grid, each photon passes a series of intersections in the grid. The grid measures space and the clock's time. Together, they can be used to measure events, moments in space and time. Every time a photon passes an intersection, we consider this an event. For example, when the photon moving above the light bulb reaches the last intersection in the grid, it has a position of five units above the light bulb, and the clock behind it reads five seconds. This happens synchronized with the left, the right, and the bottom photon, all with the clock on five seconds. The diagonal photons reach their last intersection with the clock on seven. All these readings we have just taken are relative to the yellow spacecraft, its coordinate system and its time. So for a blue spacecraft drifting past, observing the same events, it will get the same readings, the same positions in the grid system and the same times for each events. And each photon will go through exactly the same intersections that we see the photons go through. So let us now see the yellow spacecraft moving with its grid system and clocks. All the events that we just witnessed when the spacecraft was stationary must be maintained for when the spacecraft is moving. With the spacecraft moving at point 2C, The most obvious distortion is the distortion in time. The clocks are now no longer synchronized. The leftmost clock is ticking ahead of the rightmost clock. We are experiencing the left side in the future compared to the right. Now it's important to remember as far as occupants of the yellow spacecraft are concerned, all the clocks are synchronized. We can see why the clocks aren't synchronized. Because when the light was emitted, moving out at sea, as the left photon moved towards the left, the left side of the grid was coming up to meet it. And so it ends up arriving at the left side of the grid before the right photon can get to its last intersection. We have to maintain all the events. And so, with the left photon arriving at the left side of the grid, the clock there must be reading 5. When the right photon arrives at its last intersection, the time there must also be 5. The left clock six to five before the right clock. There are more distortions in space and time that become more apparent at higher speeds. At 0.866c, you can see that the grid is contracted in the direction of motion. This effect was present at 0.2c but it is now much more obvious. This effect is called length contraction, and it is a direct consequence of the left clocks moving further into the future compared to the right clocks. Because the whole grid is moving to the right, if the left is more advanced in time, it is more advanced in space towards the right. It has caught up to the right side of the grid a little, at 0.866c, 
the grid is half its stationary length, or what is called the proper length. Another distortion in time that is more apparent at this speed is the slowing of time for the yellow spacecraft. The moving clocks are running at half the rate of the stationary clock. Observe the photon moving above the light bulb. When the yellow spacecraft was stationary, it took five seconds for the photon to reach the last intersection in the grid. Now, from our point of view, it takes 10 seconds as measured by our stationary clock. This is because the photon now takes a longer path from the point of emission to the last intersection in the grid. But the photon is still moving at sea, just as when the spacecraft was stationary. The path length is twice as long compared to the stationary grid. So we say the photon takes twice as long to get to the last intersection. Our clock says 10 and the moving clock reads 5. This slowing of time is called time dilation. At 0.99c, all the relativistic effects we have seen are more pronounced. I have removed the clocks because they cannot be read due to the length contraction. However, you can see that the left photon reaches the leftmost intersection very quickly, and the right photon takes a long time to reach its last intersection. The clocks have moved even further away from being synchronized. The time dilation effect can be seen by the fact that the photon that moves above the light bulb is transversing seven times more space than when the spacecraft was stationary. A clock in the yellow spacecraft would be running seven times slower than our stationary clock. So all these distortions in space and time are as a result of keeping the velocity of light a constant and maintaining all the events created when the spacecraft was stationary. When looking at the spacecraft moving at 0.99c, it is quite amazing to think that on board the yellow spacecraft, the photons radiate in a uniform distribution. Now that we have seen how the beaming effect is related to the distortion in space and time, let's look at a 3D representation. Here we have the yellow spacecraft stationary once again. It will emit a spherical distribution of photons. We can orbit about the spacecraft to see the photons are reasonably evenly distributed. At 0.866c, the beaming effect is very strong. If you were standing in the front of the spacecraft, you would see the light bulb brighter than when it was stationary. If you were standing at the back of the spacecraft, you would be receiving fewer photons and the light bulb would look dimmer. At 0.9999c, these are like the speeds of electrons and protons rushing away from around black holes. Most of the light is emitted in the direction of motion. Very little is directed behind. This explains why in the image of M87 we see a jet heading towards us but not away. With the particles heading towards us we are receiving most of the photons emitted by them as they rush away from around the black hole. However, for the jet directed away from us, we do not receive much light, and it appears very dim. This concludes our brief look at the distortion of space and time introduced to us by Albert Einstein in 1905.